In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Bible Interact presenters uncover the depths of God's Word and reveal the Hebraic foundations of the Christian faith. We encourage you to participate with us. You can view our DVD presentations, make use of study guides and workbooks, and invite our presenters to speak in your community. You'll find all of this and more on the Bible Interact website, where you can also experience Bible history and culture through our online archaeology museum. The photo gallery allows you to enjoy the land of Israel through pictures and videos. You can even listen to exciting lectures through our continuing education program. Shalom. I am Dr. Ann Davis, and this is the result of an, an intensive study that I have done on the language of prophecy. Uh, you know, we're, we're fascinated by the end times and prophecy, and, uh, and, and I think it's accompanied sometimes by fear, concern, worry, or, uh, at, you know, the, the fear of the unknown or, or whatever. So uh, this is going to be a study on the language of prophecy. So I'm approaching it from the standpoint of what the people in the ancient world would have heard from these words and how the language is being used very differently, I think, than uh, the language that we use today. So we're going to have to go back into the ancient world and take a look at this. Now, I call it the language of prophecy, and I've divided it into two parts. Uh, part one will be four sessions, and they will all be on the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures. In part two, we will have another four sessions that will be on... Um, on, uh, from the New Testament. Now, let me tell you how I got into this project. I was reading a book by Brent Sandy, Dr. Sandy, who, and, and the title of his book was Plowshares and Pruning Hooks. And, and it's a, a fascinating study, and he's taken a very different uh, perspective. He's, he's, like me, he's very interested in the language. And uh, so we refer to this as a, a study of linguistics. Linguistics is language. So he was looking at prophecy from the standpoint of, as, as I am, as how the people of the ancient world would, would have heard these words. But then what I did uh, was, was something else. Um, I uh, took these first century methods of searching the scriptures that I have recreated. I call them likely first century methods of searching the scriptures. And I applied them to, uh, to what I was reading by Dr. Sandy. And now I, I don't agree with everything that Dr. Sandy has done, but his approach really attracted my interest. So then I went in with these first century methods, and, and what they are is, 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 is my work, I have spent years on this actually, as to uh, how the people of the first century would have searched the scriptures. Now in the first century, their scriptures were the Hebrew scriptures because the New Testament had not yet been written. So, um, and, and for them, the Hebrew scriptures were the, the, the center of their lives. We see in the New Testament over 300 citations of the Hebrew scriptures. And for every citation, there are many more allusions. So um, I have brought back the, uh, the way the people of the first century would have heard the words of Yeshua. And I've applied this to the whole concept of, of prophecy. Now, this part one will have four sessions. In the first session, I'm going to give you two characteristics of prophecy. Actually, I'm going to bring in a few other characteristics, but there'll be two main characteristics. Then in session two, we're in the, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, so I want to take a look at this angry God, this God of wrath, and how that comes into prophecy. You know, we think in the New Testament, oh, God's not angry in the New Testament. Wrong. <laughs> It's just not going to have quite the same language, but that's okay. And then in session three, we'll look at the God of rewards, the God of blessings, the God of grace, and finally we'll end with uh, practicing in the prophet Hosea. Um, so this is how we're going to approach um, this, this part one of these four sessions. All right, the first characteristic I want to point out is that, and I cannot emphasize this enough, we cannot understand prophecy until it happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into Psalm 22. And we're, remember, these were the last words that Yeshua spoke on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then in the Gospel of John.